Hello everyone, my name is He Bu. I'm a PhD student from Georgia Tech. Today my talk lies in the intersection of random graph processes, which involves randomized algorithm for graphs on Ramsey theory. It is based on joint work with my advisor, Luz Wonki. The topic of this talk is to introduce a way to construct pseudo-random triangle-free subgraphs of dense graphs. So compared to previous results, previous result only makes such construction in complete graph, where we can make such construction in dense graphs. And we can construct the triangle-free graph satisfy the pseudo-random property by some polynomial type randomized algorithm. And in the algorithm, to control errors, we build some self-position mechanism. And by the pseudo-randomness of the triangle-free graph we construct, it helps us to approximately decompose complete graphs into such triangle-free graphs. And as an application, it solves a Ramsey conjecture by Fox, Grispon, Yubino, Person, and Zabu. So before introducing our result, let me briefly reveal some of the previous results. Erdage in 1961 using alteration method, Spencer in 1977 using Loas local lemmer, and uh, Creole in 1994 using large division approach. All of them find the number test graph G in the complete graph Kn, such that the graph G is triangle free on this independence number at most some constant C times square root of N times log N. So it means the size of largest independent side of G is at most this number. So all of them construct the triangle free graph G in the binomial random graph GNP model, where the binomial random graph GNP is the n vertex graph, but each of the n choose two pair occurs as an edge independently with probability p. And their results were improved by Key in 1995 and was reproved by Bowman in 2008. So both Kim and Bowman find an n vertex graph G in the complete graph Kn, such that the graph G is still triangle free but a smaller independence number. So as you can see, there is a logarithmic improvement over here. So both Kim and Bowman construct such graph G using the idea of triangle-free process. So what is the idea of triangle-free process? It is a random greedy algorithm, such that at each step, we add some random match that does not create a triangle. So to be specific, here is a triangle-free process. So at each step, we add one random match uniformly at random that does not create a triangle. So for example, if we want to contrast the graph G in the host graph Kn, so at the beginning, all the edges of the host graph A of the host graph Kn are available. So they can be added. And we add one random match at each step. For example, we add this random match. And then we, at next step, we add another random match, for example, this one. And then we continue to add another random match, for example, this one. Then at this moment, you can see that these two edges become closed because adding them will create a triangle. So we will never add them to contrast the graph G. So they become closed and we will not add them, and we add another random match, for example, this one. Then as you can see, this one become closed. So as you can see, the graph construct in this way are always triangle free. So we only need to show that after many steps, the graph construct in this way has small inverse number satisfy this condition. And that is what Bowman did in his 2008 proof. He analyzed this triangle free process and shows that after many steps, the graph, the triangle free graph construct in this way really satisfies this condition. Well, much earlier, 
Kim used a semi-random variation of triangle-free process. The difference is that instead of adding just one random match in each step as the triangle-free process did, thus, the semi-random variation add a large chunk of random matches in each, in each step. And that is the difference between Kim and Bowman's proof. And it has been shown that their result, the unit number is tied up to the constant C by a result by a tight motion similarity. Therefore, Kim's result lead to the right order of magnitude of the famous Ramsey number R3T. So for his breakthrough, Kim also received Fulkson Prize in 1997 for his result, for this result. Uh, that is what Kim and Bowman did. Both of them found one yearly optimal R3T graph in the complete graph kit. And uh, here is our contribution. So instead of finding just one nearly optimal R3T graph, we find an almost a packing of nearly optimal R3T graph. I mean, for any epsilon greater than zero, we can find a collection of HD strand graph GI in a complete graph KN, such that each graph GI is an unvertex triangle free graph with controlled inverse number. So each graph GI is similar as Kim and Bowman find. But secondly, we can show that the union of the graph GI in this HD strong collection contains at least one minus epsilon fraction of the edges of the complete graph KN. Uh, to pull out, so our result can be viewed as a packing extension of Kim's result. So to prove our packing result, we use some uh, very simple polynomial time random math. So actually, we start with the host graph H0 equal to the complete graph Kn. And in each host graph Hi, we find the triangle free graph Gi by semi random variation of triangle free process. And then we remove the edges of Gi from Hi to get Hi plus one, and then we repeat. Therefore, you can see that each graph Gi constructed in this way is triangle free and they are edge disjoint. Therefore, the only thing we need to show is that we need to show that the graph GI defined in this way has inverse number and most of this, this one is not too large. And that is our main uh, task. And as you can see, this time the whole graph HI is no longer a complete graph. Okay, so we overcome the difficulty by our Mentecone result. So this is our Mentecone result. So here you can assume rho is some edge density and ice is the size of some large vertex set. So our result states that if you host graph H, it's not too sparse, which means for any two different vertex size A and B of size ice, the number of edges between A and B in H is at least epsilon fraction, which means the number of edges between A and B in H is at least epsilon times size of A times size of B. Then we can find the triangle free subgraph G of H, such that the number of edges between A and B in G is concentrated around the edge density rho times the number of edges between A and B in H. For all these joint vertex at A and B of that size. So here, the graph G behaves like a pseudo random triangle subgraph of H. So it be, behaves actually, it behaves like a row random subgraph of H, but it's triangle free. So we call this property the pseudo random property of G. And especially this condition implies that the number of edges between A and B in G is greater than zero. Therefore, it means the inverse number of G is at most of two S. Therefore, the triangle free graph G is nearly optimal R3T graph.
uh, this molecular result will imply our packing result. Recall that like to get our packing result, we start with H0 equal to the complete bar of Kn. Um, we sequentially choose Gi in Hi by this metaconic result, where Hi plays the role of H and Gi plays the role of G. Then we remove the edges of Gi from Hi to get Hi plus one. And this pseudo-random property guarantees that at each step, at each iteration, we remove a right fraction of edges from Hi. Therefore, iteratively, we can prove that the number of edges between A and B in Hi is roughly this number to the power of i times the number of edges between A and B in H0. And because H0 is a complete graph Kn, therefore, the number of edges between A and B in H0 is sets of A times sets of B. So as long as the number of iterations satisfies that this fraction is at least an epsilon, then we can iteratively apply our technical result because the assumption of the whole graph H is that this number should be at least epsilon. And after a large number of fractions, say capital F fraction, when this fraction is roughly epsilon, we stop. Then by a double counting argument, it implies that we have covered at least one minus epsilon fraction of edges of the complete graph Kn of the complete graph Kn. Therefore, we get our packing result so that we can cover at least one minus epsilon fraction of edges of the complete graph Kn by the, the edge determined graph Gi, such that each Gi is triangle three and with control infinite number. So that's how our metaconic result implies our packing result. So as I discussed, to prove this metaconic result, we analyze the semi-random variation of triangle free process. So we run the semi-random variation of triangle free process in the whole graph H to find the triangle free graph G. And the benefit is that we do not require degree of code degree regularity of the whole graph H. For example, we do not require all the vertex degree of H are roughly C. Therefore, we do not require the whole graph H to be a complete graph as previous result. And here we only require H to be some dense graph. And because we need to run many iterations of the process, therefore controlling arrows I, uh, is important. Otherwise, after many iterations, the error term will take over. And to control errors, we build some self division mechanism into the process. And some probabilistic tools we used are bounded difference in quality and upper tail in quality of one key. So as a summary, instead of finding just one nearly optimal RCT graph as Kim and Bowman did, we find an almost a packing of nearly optimal R3T graph. I mean, for any epsilon greater than zero, we can cover at least a one minus epsilon fraction of edges of the complete graph Kn by a collection of HD strand graph Gi, such that each graph Gi is a vertex triangle free graph with controlled infinite number. Our next remarks, we find the collection of HD strand graph Gi by some polynomial time randomized algorithm. So we iteratively apply a semi-random variation of triangle free process. And our packing result has applications in random theory. We solve a conjecture by folks, Grace Pong, Yubno, Herzen, and Zabu. So as an open problem, here we view the self division mechanism is crucial for us to weaken the assumption on the whole graph H. So we do not re require the whole graph to be a complete graph or satisfy some regularity condition. And we are wondering, are there any applications of the self division mechanism, maybe in the design of randomized algorithm? And this talk is based on a paper by me and Wonky which has the same title as this talk, and it has appeared in Commentorica.
Uh, thanks for listening. I may stop here. Thank you.